Hello, welcome back to another video tutorial here at Geek at Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. In the uh, last tutorial, we worked on UV mapping and laying out the UVs of our tire here in a flat symmetrical manner so that we could uh, save the UV map, which we did in the last tutorial, and bring it into Photoshop here so that we can create a tire. So here in Photoshop, I brought in my UV map. Now I have the most uh, part of my Photoshop screen here cut off and that's so I can see more of the uh, canvas here but I have just enough here so that you can see the layers as I create them. All right, first thing I want to do is I want to increase the size of this image because um, when you save it out of hexagon it saves it awfully small it's only 824 824 resolution of 72 I'm gonna bump this up to 300 and make this 2000 okay first thing I want to do is control R to bring up my rulers if you don't know where the rulers are don't like shortcuts come down here to view and click on rulers I want to create some guides here so I can create my tire tracks and I'll s s place it just at the outside of the top of the UV map. And I'll come down here to the bottom and I'm just going to click and drag a guideline right down here to the bottom. Now this is why I chose the middle, I'm sorry, why I chose to have a, a seam or an edge loop all the way down the center of my tire because now I know exactly where the center of my tire is on my UV map and it makes it easy to align the tire tread as we make it. If I didn't have hexagon create this line for me well then I would be dealing with trying to place exactly my tread in between or, or in, here, here is the top of my tread. If I didn't have this line here, I would be guessing and trying to approximate where the center line was and doing it manually uh, without the visual aid of this white line already there. So that's why I created that line. And I'm going to create a smart guide right there and another guide right there. Now I do have smart guides turned on and that is smart guides are here they are they're right down here under show and smart guides. I do have smart guides turned on which will be a great aid in laying this out. Okay I'm gonna grab another guide Try to put it right up in there. And then another one right here. Okay. All right, that'll work. Don't need my rulers anymore. Control R to hide my rulers. I'm going to create a new layer on top of that. And I'm going to grab my paintbrush. Now let's set the default colors back to their standard black and white. I'm going to click on my black and I'm going to create a dark, very dark uh, charcoal color. About like that. There we are. Okay, come over to my paintbrush. Now up here in your paintbrush palette, if you click on this little down arrow, I believe a default brush package that comes with Photoshop is called Square, Square Brushes, and I think this is scrolled off just out of view here on this video, but I'm going to choose Square Brushes. Let me append this to my... Okay, I'm going to choose a Square Brush let me increase its size a little bit. There we go. That's about the dark color that I want. 
under brush tip shape, what I want to do is increase the spacing and probably increase it a little bit more, maybe up to about 130. There we are. That is a little large. Let me zoom in here. Okay, if this is the pattern, that'll work. Okay. Let me zoom out. Okay, on this new layer that we created, I'm just, it doesn't really matter where because I'm going to have to move it into position anyway. I'm going to hold down my shift key and just hold, press the left mouse button and just draw straight across. And now I'm going to position it down here. See, now I know where my center line is. Whoops. I'm going to hold down my Alt key and notice my cursor turns to a double arrow. Now I can just copy and drag it right down where I want this new one to be. And let me see. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Let me nudge that up one. Okay. Those are centered. All right, that'll work. I'm just going to merge these two together. Now this is just a very basic, basic tire pattern. If you want something that looks better than this, then just go online, do a quick little Google search, look for and type in tire treads, uh, tread pattern, something like that, and uh, see what you come up with, and then just duplicate that pattern. But I'm just going to create something very basic, just to give you an idea on how to very easily create uh, a tread pattern here for your tire. Let me just count the spaces in between here. One, two, three. Okay, and this is one, two, three, four. Let me move that down. Okay, looking good so far. I'm going to merge all three of these together and I'll just call it tread. <coughs> create a new layer on top of that, come back to my paintbrush tool, click on my paintbrush. Now I'm just going to use the same settings so far, but I'm going to squish it down flat like this, and I'm going to rotate the angle to 90 degrees, and let me just see what this looks like. Yeah, I'm going to have to reduce the spacing here. Let's bring it down to about 60. Nope. Let's bring it down to about 30. and bring the spacing down to about 20. There we go. Okay, that'll work. Well, I'm going to do the same thing for this as I did for my initial tread pattern. I'm just going to hold down shift and just paint right across. And let's move this up into place. Now, because I have a smart guide here, this will snap right to the guide, which is a big help. Oops. There we are. Let's shrink this down a little bit. Hold down Alt, create a duplicate of that. And I will merge those two together. Okay, let's move these over here to the edge. Come to my pat tread pattern, and I'll move that right there over to... Actually, no, I don't want that. I want the beginning of an entire piece of tread right here on my line. There we are. And we can crop off that little extra. And let's spin around over here. There we are. Click to confirm that. There we go. Okay. So, look, in looking at this center tread pattern, 
um, I know that the edge of the tread comes uh, right to the edge of my UV map and where the UV map meets this is going to be one very long tread so I want to offset this piece of tread this distance here I want to offset it from my smart guide here or my guideline so I'm gonna guess that it's about there and that's okay now on this layer right above it I want to offset it um, this distance that's in between my lines here so I'm just going to guess I guess that looks good once we finish with this and we put it on our tire over in hexagon we can see if it needs adjustment and if so we can very quickly come back here and make some very slight adjustments and uh, we'd be in good shape okay now let's um, let's create some text here and I'm going to use the same color so let me hold down cap lock okay got your tires you would definitely want to choose a better font than this, but this is just uh, very basically showing you how to create a tire tread pattern and probably a little bit smaller. I'm going to hold down Alt and move this right up here. And notice when I'm moving it how these pink lines show where it is arranged and aligned with all the other objects. That's the benefit of using smart guides. Okay, that looks that looks good. Now what I want to do is I'm going to reverse this and I'm going to come down here to transform and I'm going to flip it horizontally. Do the same one with the other one. Transform. Flip horizontal. The only reason why I'm doing this is because if I arranged it in a manner in which it uh, is supposed to be, then um, when it comes into hexagon, hexagon automatically reverses it and then I need to reverse it again in hexagon and hexagon is painfully slow in reversing or flipping an image it's 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 not even worth waiting for so I'll just do it here and make life easy on myself okay come to select my background create a new layer right above that I'm going to actually I'm gonna change my palette here I'm going to choose the exact same color by using the eyedropper choose the exact same color as I already have but I'm just going to modify it and make it just slightly lighter just about like that alt delete to fill that in and I'm done with my smart guide so I can come up here to view and I guess I could hide them but I'm just going to clear them I don't need them anymore okay coming into my tread here I'm gonna double click and add a layer style to that actually let me back out of that let me zoom in bevel and emboss and I'm gonna bring the size of it down to well zero and the contour play with the contour to and find one that uh, that you like uh, I kinda like this so that will work for me and depending upon the contour that you choose you may want to augment it by choosing whether its direction is up or down and I'm gonna bring the highlight of that down considerably down to about 20 and the op opacity of the shadow about 35 and that looks good 
I'm going to hold down Alt and then transfer or copy the layer effect settings right onto my new layer or the layer above that which has these little vertical stripes on it. And let's see the Goodyear. There's that and there's that. I will copy the settings onto that those as well. Whoops. Okay, let's do a quick save here. Save as Come on over here and we'll come to a full screen view. With our tire selected, create a new texture. Come down here to Texture Image. Choose the one that we just created. And there it is. And notice we created it in reverse when we were in Photoshop. At least the letters were reversed. But here it comes in uh, as it should. Now definitely this is not the greatest tread pattern in the world. But this is just an illustration showing you how to basically create one and arrange them um, on your UV map to bring here into Photoshop. Now, granted, this looks not very good. If you notice, the letters are kind of tweaked and skewed, and these perfectly straight bars here are all tweaked. And that's because we have a very low polygon mesh tire. But watch what happens when we increase the mesh. It straightens out, and it looks very good and that solves the problem. But it's always easier to create your objects in low, with low uh, number of polygons. You can always add and increase that number later on. But it just makes it easier to work with when you have a lower resolution uh, object. So that's creating a tire here in Hexagon and Photoshop. Thanks for watching this tutorial here at Geek and Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. Have a good day.